The Catholic Church in the Philippines Filipino, Simbahang Catolica, Simbahang Catolico, Spanish, Iglesia Catolica, is part of the worldwide Catholic Church, under the spiritual direction of the Pope. The Philippines is one of the two nations in Asia having a substantial portion of the population professing the Catholic faith, aside from East Timor, and the third largest in the world after Brazil and Mexico. The Episcopal Conference responsible in governing the faith is the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines. Christianity was introduced in the Philippine Islands by Spanish missionaries and colonists, who arrived in waves beginning in the early 16th century in Cebu. Compared to the Spanish era, when Christianity was recognized as the state religion, the faith today is practiced in the context of a secular state. In 2015, it was estimated that 84 million Filipinos, or roughly 82.9% of the population, profess the Catholic faith. History Spanish era Starting in the 16th century Spanish explorers and colonists arrived in the Philippines with two major goals, to participate in the spice trade which was previously dominated by Portugal, and to evangelize and in nearby civilizations, such as China. While many historians claim that the first mass in the islands was held on Easter Sunday of 1521 in a little island near the present-day Bukidnon province, the exact location is disputed. There is only one recorded mass in the Philippines that is provable, and it was that held at the island port named Mazawa on Easter Sunday March 31, 1521. This event was recorded by the Venetian diarist Antonio Pigafetta who traveled on the Spanish expedition to reach the islands in 1521, led by Ferdinand Magellan. Later, the Legazpi expedition of 1565 that originated and was organized from Mexico City marked the beginning of the Hispanization of the Philippines. It was in Cebu, the spread of Christianity began. This expedition was an effort to occupy the islands with as little bloodshed and conflict as possible, ordered by Philip. Lieutenant Legazpi was in charge of making peace with the natives and through swift military conquest. To do so, he set up colonies. Christianity expanded from Cebu when the remaining Spanish missionaries were forced westwards temporarily due to conflict with the Portuguese and laid the foundations of the Christian community in the Panay in around 1570 to 1571. A year later, the second batch of missionaries reached Cebu. The island became the ecclesiastical seat, as it is the center for evangelization. A notable missionary was Fray Alfonso Jimenez, who traveled and penetrated the Camarines region through the islands of Masbate, Leyte, Samar, and Burias and centered the church on Naga City. He was called the first apostle of the region. By 1571, Fray Herrera who was assigned as chaplain of Legazpi, from Panay advanced further north and founded the local church community in Manila. The good father thereafter voyaged in the Espiritu Santo and shipwrecked in Catanduanas, there he attempted to convert the natives and later martyred for the faith. In 1572 the Spaniards led by Juan de Salcedo marched from Manila further north with the second batch of Augustinian missionaries and pioneered the evangelization in the Ilocos starting with Vigan and the Cagayan regions. Under the encomienda system, Filipinos had to pay tribute to the encomendero of the area and in return the encomendero taught them the Christian faith and also protected them from enemies. Although Spain had used this system, it did not work quite as effectively in the Philippines as it did in America. The missionaries were not as successful in converting the natives as they had hoped. In 1579, Bishop Salazar and clergymen were outraged because the encomenderos had abused their powers. Although the natives were resistant, they could not organize into a unified resistance towards the Spaniards due to geography, ethno-linguistic differences, and overall mutual indifference. Cultural impact the Spaniards had observed the natives' lifestyle and disagreed with it wholeheartedly. They saw the influence of the devil and felt the need to liberate the natives from their evil ways. Over time, geographical limitations have shifted the natives into what are called barangays, which are small kinship units consisting of about 30 to 100 families. Each barangay had a mutable caste system, with any sub-classes varying from one barangay to the next. Generally, patriarchal lords and kings were called datus and rajas, while the maharlika were the nobility and the timawa were freedmen. 
The Alipan or servile class were dependent on the upper classes, an arrangement misconstrued as slavery by the Spaniards. Intermarriage between the Timawa and the Alipan was permitted, which created a more, but flexible system of privileges and labor services. The Spaniards attempted to suppress this class system based on their misconception that the dependent, servile class were an oppressed group. Although they failed at completely abolishing the system, they instead worked to use it to their own advantage. Religion and marriage were also issues that the missionaries of Spain wanted to transform. Polygyny was not uncommon, but was mostly confined to wealthier chieftains. Divorce and remarriage were also common as long as reasons were justified. Illness, infertility, or a finding better potential to take as a spouse was justified reasons for divorce. Along with those practices, missionaries also disagreed with the practices of paying dowries, the bride price, where the groom paid his father-in-law in gold, or with bride service, in which the groom performed manual labor for the bride's family the marriage, the latter custom dying out only in the late 20th century. Missionaries had disapproved of these because they felt bride price was an act of selling one. S. Daughter and labor services The household of the father allowed premarital sex between the bride and groom, which contradicted Christian beliefs. The pre-conquest of the natives consisted of a variety of monotheistic and polytheistic cults. Often, localized forms of Buddhism, Hinduism, Islam or Tantrism admixed with animism. Baithala, Tagalog, Central Luzon, or Lan, Visayan, was the ultimate, creator deity above subordinate gods and goddesses. Natives also worshipped nature and venerated the spirits of their ancestors whom they propitiated with sacrifices. Mostly practiced ritualistic drinking and many rituals performed aimed at cure for a certain illness. Magic and superstition also existed among the natives. The Spaniards claimed to liberate the natives from their wicked practices and show them the right path to God. In 1599, negotiation began between a number of lords and their freemen and the Spaniards. The native rulers agreed to submit to the rule of a Castilian king and convert to Christianity, and allow missionaries to spread the faith. In return, the Spaniards agreed to protect the natives from their enemies, mostly Japanese, Chinese, and Muslim pirates. Difficulties Several factors hindered the Spaniards' efforts to spread Christianity throughout the archipelago. An inadequate number of missionaries on the island made it difficult to reach all the people and harder to convert them. This is also due to the fact that the route to the Philippines was in itself a rigorous task and some clergy never had the opportunity to set foot on the islands. Some clergy fell ill or waited years for their chance to take the journey. For others, the climate difference once they arrived proved to be unbearable. Other missionaries desired to go to Japan or China instead and spread their faith there, or those who remained were more interested in mercantilism. The Spaniards also quarreled with the Chinese population in the Philippines. The Chinese had set up shops in what was called the Parian or Bazaar during the 1580s to trade silk and other goods for Mexican silver. The Spaniards anticipated revolts from the Chinese and therefore were under constant suspicion of the latter. The Spanish government was highly dependent on the influx of silver from Mexico and Peru since it supported the government in Manila, the main city, and to continue the Christianization of the archipelago. The most difficult obstacles facing the missionaries were the dispersion of the Filipinos and their seemingly endless varieties of languages and dialects. The geographical isolation forced them into numerous small villages and every other province supported a different language. Furthermore, incessant privateering from Japanese walkout pirates and slave raiding by Islamic Moros continuously frustrated Spanish attempts to Christianize the archipelago and in order to offset the damaging effects of incessant warfare with them, the Spanish had to resort to militarizing the local populations, importing soldiers from Latin America and construct networks of fortresses across the islands. The Spanish Empire and its local allies being in a state of constant war against such pirates and slavers caused the Philippines to be a drain to the vice royalty of New Spain in Mexico City, which paid the costs of maintaining the captaincy of Las Islas Filipinas in lieu of the Crown of Spain. Religious Orders the Philippines is home to many of the world's major religious congregations, and today these include the Augustinians, 
Recollects, Jesuits, Dominicans, Benedictines, Franciscans, Carmelites, Divine Word Missionaries, De La Salle Christian Brothers, Salesian of Don Bosco, and the indigenous RVM Sisters and the Augustinian Recollect Sisters. The five regular orders who were assigned to Christianize the natives were the Augustinians, who came with Legazpi, the Discalced Franciscans 1578, the Jesuits 1581, the Dominican Friars 1587, and the Augustinian Recollects simply called the Recolletas 1606. In 1594, all had agreed to cover a specific area of the archipelago to deal with the vast dispersion of the natives. The Augustinians and Franciscans mainly covered the Tagalog country while the Jesuits had a small area. The Dominicans encompassed the Parian. The provinces of Pampanga and Ilocos were assigned to the Augustinians. The province of Camarines went to the Franciscans. The Augustinians and Jesuits were also assigned the Visayan Islands. The Christian conquest had not reached the Mindanao province due to a highly resistant Muslim community that existed pre-conquest. The task of the Spanish missionaries, however, was far from complete. By the 17th century, the Spaniards had created about 20 large villages and almost completely transformed the native lifestyle. For their Christian efforts, the Spaniards justified their actions by claiming that the small villages were a sign of barbarism and only bigger, more compact communities allowed for a richer understanding for Christianity. The Filipinos faced much coercion, the Spaniards knew little of the rituals inviting for the natives. The layout of these villages was in gridiron form that allowed for easier navigation and more order. They were also spread far enough to allow for one cabecera or capital parish and small visited chapels located throughout the villages in which clergy only stayed temporarily for mass, rituals, or nuptials. Indigenous resistance the Filipinos to an extent resisted Christianization because they felt an agricultural obligation and connection with their rice fields, as large villages took away their resources and they feared the compact environment. This also took away from the encomienda system that depended on land, therefore, the encomenderos lost tributes. However, the missionaries continued their proselytizing efforts, one strategy being targeting noble children. These scions of now tributary monarchs and rulers were subjected to intense education in religious doctrine and the Spanish language, with the theory that they in turn could convert their elders, and eventually, the noblemen's subjects. Despite the progress of the Spaniards, it took many years for the natives to truly grasp key concepts of Christianity. In Catholicism, four main sacraments attracted the natives but only for ritualistic reasons, and they did not fully alter their lifestyle as the Spaniards had hoped. Baptism was believed to simply cure ailments, while matrimony was a concept many natives could not understand and thus had violated the sanctity of monogamy. They were however, allowed to keep the tradition of dowry, which was accepted into law. Bride price and bride service were practiced by natives despite labels of heresy. Confession was required of everyone once a year, and the clergy used the confessionario, a bilingual text aid, to help natives understand the rite's meaning and what they had to confess. Locals were initially apprehensive, but gradually used the rite to excuse excesses throughout the year. Communion was given out selectively, for this was one of the most important sacraments that the missionaries did not want to risk having the natives violate. To help their cause, evangelism was done in the native language. The Doctrina Christiana is a book of catechism, the alphabet, and basic prayers in Tagalog, both in the Latin alphabet and Bebeyan, and Spanish published in the 16th century. American period, 1898-1946 During the sovereignty of the United States, the American government implemented the separation of church and state. It reduced the significant political power exerted by the church and led to the establishment of religions, particularly Protestantism, within the country. In this era, in the first decade of 1900, Jorge Barlin was ordained as the first Filipino bishop of the Catholic Church. He was a bishop of the Archdiocese of Nueva Caceres. American colonization of the country, American jurisprudence reintroduced separation of church and state relying on the First Amendment and the metaphor of Thomas Jefferson on the wall of separation between church and state. 10, but the Philippine experience has shown that this theoretical wall of separation has been crossed several times by secular authorities. 
Schumacher states that in 1906, the Philippine Supreme Court intervened in the issue of parish ownership by returning assets seized by the Philippine Independent Church, while certain charitable organizations managed or influenced by the Catholic Church were either returned or sequestered. The provision of the 1935 Philippine Constitution on mimicked the First Amendment to the United States Constitution, but the sentences, the exercise and enjoyment of religious profession and worship, without discrimination or preference, shall be forever allowed. No religious test shall be required the exercise of civil political rights were appended and this section became the basis the non-establishment of and freedom of religion in the Philippines. 1946 Present when the Philippines was placed under martial law by dictator Ferdinand Marcos, relations between church and state changed dramatically, as some bishops expressly and openly opposed martial law. The turning point came in 1986 when the CBCP president then Archbishop of Cebu Ricardo Cardinal Vidal appealed to the Filipinos and the bishops against the government and the fraudulent result of the SNAP election, with him was then Archbishop of Manila Jaime Cardinal Sin, who broadcast over church-owned Radio Veritas a call people to support anti-regime rebels. The people's response became what is now known as the People Power Revolution, which ousted Marcos. Church and state today maintain generally cordial relations despite differing opinions over specific issues. With the guarantee of religious freedom in the Philippines, the Catholic clergy subsequently remained in the political background as a source of moral influence especially during elections. Political candidates still generally court the clergy and religious leaders additional support, although this does not guarantee victory. By the entrance of the 21st century, Catholicism is practiced to different extents, ranging from the more orthodox, the traditional sort, to folk Catholicism and even charismatic Catholicism. Of the roughly 84 million Filipino Catholics today, 37% are estimated to hear Mass regularly, 29% consider themselves very religious, and only about one of every 11 members ever think of leaving the church. During the Philippine Drug War, the Church in the Philippines has been critical of extrajudicial killings, and what it sees as deterred administration approval of the bloodshed. Members of the Catholic clergy have been killed during the drug war. In response, some churches offer sanctuary to those who fear death due to the drug war violence. In response to the criticism he has received from the Church, Duterte criticized the Church and said, I said your God is not my God because your God is stupid. Internal movements Catholic Charismatic Renewal A number of Catholic Charismatic Renewal movements emerged vis-a-vis -vis the Born Again movement during the 70s. The Charismatic movement offered in the Spirit Seminars in the early days which have now evolved and have different names. These seminars focus on the Charisma's gifts of the Holy Spirit. Some of the charismatic movements were the Assumption Prayer Group, Couples for Christ, the Brotherhood of Christian Businessmen and Professionals, El Shaddai, Elam Communities, Kerygma, the Light of Jesus Community, and Shalom. Neocatechumenal Way The Catholic Church's Neocatechumenal Way in the Philippines has been established more than 40 years. Membership in the Philippines now exceeds 25,000 persons, in more than 700 communities, with concentrations in Manila and Iloilo Province. A neocatechumenal diocesan seminary, the Redemptorist Mater Seminary, is located in Parañaque, while many families in mission are all over the islands. The way has been mostly concentrated on evangelization initiatives under the authority of the local bishop. Papal Visits Pope Paul VI 1970, was the target of an assassination attempt at Manila International Airport in the Philippines in 1970. The assailant, a Bolivian surrealist painter named Benjamin Mendoza y Amor Flores, lunged toward Pope Paul with a crease, but was subdued. Pope John Paul II 1981 and 1995, visited the country twice, 1981, Cebu, and 1995. The Mass of the Late Pope in Manila 1995, was reported to have been attended by 4 million people. 
Pope Francis 2015 visited the country on January 15-19 and invited by Manila Archbishop Luis Antonio Cardinal Tagle to visit again in January 2016 on the occasion of the International Eucharistic Congress to be held in Cebu. Pope Francis held an Mass in Manila's Quirino Grandstand inside Rizal Park on Sunday, January 18. Fr. Federico Lombardi Director of the Vatican Press Office said the attendance was pegged at about 6 to 7 million worshippers, making the event the highest number ever recorded in papal history. It surpassed the record of the Mass of Pope John Paul II in 1995 at the same venue. Education The Catholic Church is involved in education at all levels. It has founded and continues to sponsor hundreds of secondary and primary schools as well as a number of colleges and internationally known universities. The Jesuit Ateneo de Manila University, La Salle Brothers de La Salle University, and the Dominican University of Santo Tomas are listed in the world's best colleges and universities. In the Times Higher Education QS World University Rankings, other prominent educational institutions in the country are St. Scholastica. S. College Manila, Angeles University Foundation, Holy Angel University, Vincentian. S. Adamson University, Colegio de San Juan de Latran, University of San Carlos, University of San Jose, Recoletas, San Beta College, St. Louis University, St. Mary. S. University, St. Paul University System, Canosa School, San Pedro College, San Sebastian College, Recoletas de Manila, Ateneo de Davao University, Xavier University, Ateneo de Cagayan, University of St. La Salle, University of the Immaculate Conception, Notre Dame University, Notre Dame of Marbelle University, Notre Dame of Datangas University, Salesian of Don Bosco in the Philippines, St. Mary. S. Academy of Nagcarlan, Sanctuario de San Antonio Children's Learning Center, and the University of San Agustin, La Consolación College, Universidad de Santa Isabel, Ateneo de Naga University, University of Santo Tomas, Legazpi. Political influence The Catholic Church wields great influence on Philippine society and politics. One typical event is the role of the Catholic hierarchy during the Bloodless People Power Revolution of 1986. Then Archbishop of Cebu Ricardo Cardinal Vidal and then Archbishop of Manila Jaime Cardinal Sin were the two pillars of the uprising against autocratic dictator Ferdinand E. Marcos. The Cebu Archbishop, who was president of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines at that time led the rest of the Philippine bishops and made a joint declaration against the government and the result of the SNAP election, while the Manila Archbishop appealed to the public via radio to march along Epifanio de los Santos Avenue in support of rebel forces. Some 7 million people responded in what became known as the 1986 People Power Revolution, which lasted from February 22 to 25. The nonviolent revolution successfully drove President Marcos out of power and into exile in Hawaii. In 1989, President Corazon Aquino asked Cardinal Vidal to convince General Jose Comendador, who was sympathetic to the rebel forces fighting her government, to peacefully surrender. His attempt averted what could have been a bloody coup. In 2001, an aged Cardinal Sin expressed his dismay over the allegations of corruption against President Joseph Estrada. His call sparked the second EDSA revolution, dubbed as EDSA DOS. Cardinal Vidal stepped forward again and personally asked Estrada to step down to which he agreed at around 12.20 p.m. Of January 20, 2001, five continuous days of protest at the EDSA shrine in cities and municipalities of the Philippines and parts of the world. His vice president, Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, succeeded him immediately and was sworn in on the terrace of the shrine in front of Cardinal Sin. On the death of Pope John Paul II in 2005, President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo declared three days of national mourning, and was one of many dignitaries at his funeral in Vatican City. Political turmoil in the Philippines widened the rift between the state and the church. Arroyo S. Press Secretary Ignacio Bunya called the bishops and priests who attended an anti-Arroyo protest as hypocrites and people who hide their true plans. 
Single quote dot. The Church in the Philippines strongly opposed the Reproductive Bill, which is commonly known as RH Bill. The country's populace 80% of which self-identify as Catholic was deeply divided in its opinions over the issue. In 2017, a USA Today reporter remarked that the Church reached its political peak in 1986, when it was instrumental in replacing the Marcos regime. It lost influence when it opposed contraceptives in 2012. It was therefore less effective when it tried to rally public support against the deterred administration's killing of 8,000 people in 2017. Marian devotion The Philippines has shown a strong devotion to Mary, evidenced by her patronage of various towns and locales nationwide. Particularly, there are pilgrimage sites where each town has created their own versions of Mary. With Spanish regalia, indigenous miracle stories, and Asian facial features, Filipino Catholics have created hybridized, localized images, the popular devotions to which have been recognized by various popes. Filipino Marian images with an established devotion have generally received a canonical coronation, with the icon's principal shrine being customarily elevated to the status of minor basilica. Below are some pilgrimage sites and the year they received a canonical blessing, our Lady of the Abandoned, Nuestra Señora de los Desamparados, Marikina City 2005 Our Lady of Aranzazu, Nuestra Señora de Aranzazu, San Mateo, Rizal 2017 Our Lady of Biglang Awa, Nuestra Señora del Pronto Socorro, BOAC, Marinduque 1978 our Lady of Quezase, Nuestra Señora de Quezase, Tall, Batangas 1954 Our Lady of Charity, Nuestra Señora de Caridad, Basilica Menor of Our Lady of Charity Bante, Ilocos Sur 1956 Agu, La Union 1971 our Lady of Consolation, Nuestra Señora de Consolación y Correa, San Agustin Church, Intramuros, City of Manila Mother of the Divine Shepherd, Nuestra Señora Divina Pastora, Japan, Nueva Ecija 1964 Our Lady of Namakpakan, Nuestra Señora de Namakpakan, Luna, La Union 1959 our Lady of Buen Sassiso, Parañaque, Nuestra Señora del Buen Sassiso de Parañaque, Parañaque City 2005 Our Lady of Guadalupe, Nuestra Señora de Guadalupe, Pagsingen, Laguna Our Lady of Guadalupe of Cebu, Nuestra Señora de Guadalupe de Cebu, Cebu City 2006 our Lady of Guidance, Nuestra Señora de Guía, Ermita, City of Manila 1955 Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception of Pasig, Nuestra Señora de la Inmaculada Concepción de Pasig Pasig City 2008 Our Lady of Immaculate Conception, Nuestra Señora de la Inmaculada Concepción de Malabon, Malabon City 1986 our Lady of Immaculate Conception, Virgin Inmaculada Concepción de Malolos, Malolos, Bulacan 2012. Our Lady of La Naval, Nuestra Señora del Santísimo Rosario de La Naval de Manila, Quezon City 1907. Our Lady of Lords, Nuestra Señora de Lords, Quezon City 1951. Our Lady of Manawag, Nuestra Señora del Santísimo Rosario de Manawag, Manawag, Pangasinan 1926 Our Lady of Orani, Nuestra Señora del Santo Rosario de Orani, Orani, Bataan Our Lady of Peace and Good Voyage, Nuestra Señora de La Paz y Buen Viaje, Antipolo, Rizal 1926 our Lady of Peñafrancha of Naga, Nuestra Señora de Peñafrancha de Naga, Naga City, Camarines Sur 1924 Our Lady of Peñafrancha of Manila, Nuestra Señora del Rosario de Rio Pasig, Paco, City of Manila 1985 Our Lady of Piat, Nuestra Señora de Piat, Piat, Cagayan 1954 our Lady of the Pillar, Nuestra Señora La Virgen del Pilar, Zamboanga City 1960 
Our Lady of the Pillar of Imus, Nuestra Señora del Pilar de Imus, Imus, Cavite 2012. Our Lady of the Pillar of Manila, Nuestra Señora del Pilar de Manila, Santa Cruz, Manila 2017. Our Lady of the Rule, Nuestra Señora de la Regla, Open, Cebu 1954. Our Lady of Solitude of Vega Gate, Nuestra Señora de la Soledad de Porta Vega, Cavite City. Our Lady of Sorrows of Tarumba, Nuestra Señora de los Dolores de Tarumba, Paquil, Laguna. Our Lady of the Presentation, Nuestra Señora de la Candelaria, Jaro, Iloilo City. Our Mother of Perpetual Help, Nuestra Señora del Perpetuo Socorro, Baclaran, Parañaque City. Our Lady of Salvation, Nuestra Señora de la Salvación, Joroan, Tiwa, Albe. Our Lady of Mercy, Nuestra Señora de la Merced, Novaliches, Quezon City. Our Lady of Soterraña de Nieva, currently under the ownership of Imelda Marcos. Virgin de los Remedios de Pampanga, Induning Kapaldanan, Archdiocese of San Fernando Pampanga. Our Lady of Hope of Palo, Nuestra Señora de la Esperanza, Archdiocese of Palo, Palo, Leyte. Religious observances Catholic holy days, such as Christmas, Good Friday, etc. are observed as national holidays, with local saints' days being observed as holidays in different towns and cities. The Hispanic-influenced custom of holding fiestas in honor of patron saints have become an integral part of Filipino culture, as it allows for communal celebration as well as serving as a time marker for the year. A nationwide fiesta occurs every third Sunday of January, on the country-specific feast of the Santo Niño de Cebu. The largest celebrations are the Sinulog Festival in Cebu City, the Ati Atahan in Calibo, Aklan and the Danagayang in Iloilo City, which is instead held on the fourth Sunday of January. With regard to most holy days of obligation, the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines CBCP, granted dispensation on all the faithful who cannot attend Masses on these days, except for the following Yuletide observances. Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception on December 8 Christmas Day Solemnity of Mary, the Mother of God on January 1 in 2001, the CBCP also approved a reform in the liturgical calendar, which included the feasts of Our Lady of Guadalupe, Maximilian Colby, Rita of Cascia, Ezequiel Moreno and many others in its list of obligatory memorials. Filipino Diaspora Overseas Filipinos have spread Filipino culture worldwide, and have brought Filipino Catholicism with them. Filipinos have established two shrines in the Chicago metropolitan area, one at St. Wenceslaus Church dedicated to Santo Niño de Cebu, as well as another at St. Hedwig's with its statue to Our Lady of Manawag. The Filipino community in the Archdiocese of New York has the San Lorenzo Ruiz Chapel, New York City, for its apostolate. Ecclesiastical territories The Catholic Church in the Philippines is organized into 72 dioceses in 16 ecclesiastical provinces, as well as seven apostolic vicariates and a military ordinariate. Dioceses Apostolic vicariates Ordinariates Military Ordinariate of the Philippines See also Christmas customs in the Philippines Anscar Chupunko Culture of the Philippines Hispanic culture in the Philippines List of Catholic dioceses in the Philippines List of Filipino saints, blessed, and servants of God Separation of church and state in the Philippines References External links Official website of the Catholic Church in the Philippines Rosario. Salinas 
Cavite information This article incorporates material from the U.S. Library of Congress and is available to the general public, on religious freedom in the Philippines by the U.S. Department of State. Library of Congress on Fridercracy The Catholic Church in the Philippines by G. Catholic. Org Official website of the Diocese of Libmanan